everyone, welcome to part 17 of my Logic Pro 11 Mixing Fundamentals course. In this video, we're jumping into vocal EQ, compression, and de-essing, three of the most essential tools for shaping the tone and dynamics of a vocal. We'll be using Logic's channel EQ, the stock compressor, and the stock de-esser 2 plugins. These aren't flashy tools, but they're the bread and butter of vocal mixing. They're what give a vocal clarity, presence, consistency, and control. I'll show you how to use EQ to clean up muddiness and enhance intelligibility, how to apply compression to level out the dynamics of a performance, and how to tame harsh S sounds with the de-esser. Okay, so let's start by adding EQ to our lead vocal here. And the trick with EQ on vocals for me is that vocals straight off the mic sound kind of muffled to me. And what I like to do is I like to bring out the body of the voice in this range here, like sort of the, the low mid range. I like to bring out some of the diction and clarity in this like one to two, 3K range. And then I like to add some air and I like to add some presence to the voice. Now, sometimes what happens when you add uh, a lot of presence to the voice, this also brings out the sibilance. And so we have to go back and add a de-esser to control those. Now, I'm a fan of EQing things with and without the music. I often solo a track, apply the EQ, get the instrument or the voice sounding the way it sounds good to me, and then I'll add it in with the rest of the mix and make sure it fits and then make any adjustments that need to be made. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. And one of the other things, um, you know, we already added a filter to this, but I'm going to go ahead and add another filter again just to control the low end. So this would just be a steep high pass filter somewhere in this range. You can go even higher if it's a female vocalist, but I'll go like around the 50, 60 hertz range. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Now, I already mentioned this before, but the vocals in this track have already hit some effects in the studio. It's a vintage tube mic that's going into a preamp, and then the preamp is going into an LA-2A compressor just to control the dynamics. So in some ways, it's got this rich and creamy sound to it already, even without any EQ applied to it. So I'm probably going to be doing a little less EQ here than I normally would do if I had received just a completely dry vocal that maybe was recorded with a solid state mic. So again, I'm going to kind of be focusing on adding uh, presence, adding some clarity to the diction, and then some body to it as well. So just like I was saying before, I like to push things higher than they need to be, sweep them around, find a sweet spot for it, and then pull it back. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't ever tell me why. Don't you ever tell me why. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. So that's opening up the top end a little bit. Let's add a little bit of a low end boost just to give him some some more body in the bottom end. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't ever tell me why. And then I also like to sort of cut a mid low frequency range after the boost. So I'm going to find like a resonant area in this range uh, that isn't quite working, and then I'll pull it back. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you... Yeah, so there's like this boxiness in this range. So let's pull that back a little bit. And then we're going to add a diction boost, and this is usually going to be somewhere between like 1 and 3K. This is just to make the words more intelligible. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. And because we're boosting a lot of frequencies here, we may need to pull back the output gain to sort of match the input and output, although it's not 100% necessary to have your input and output always perfectly matched. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and... All right, let's hear that with the music. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't ever tell me why. Don't you ever tell me why. Cause I don't want, I don't want to know. I carried your heart when you need. Now that you're sober. 
Okay, so let's add some compression to this as well. I'm just gonna load on the stock compressor in Logic. Now, normally, again, if I got just a completely dry track that hadn't already hit any compression, I'd probably do what I call the two-stage compression trick, which is a really well-known and common way of compressing vocals by adding some sort of effect compressor followed by an opto compressor or adding an opto compressor followed by effect compressor. And, you know, my way of doing this is I typically add a stage of optical compression first that does a really good job of sort of leveling out the dynamics, as you can already see we have here. And that's, again, because this vocal was running through an LA 2A while it was being tracked. Um, so that's just sort of baked into uh, the recording. So there's nothing we can do about that. Um, and then what I'll typically do after the opto is I'll add a, a FET compressor of some kind, a more fast acting one that can uh, tame some of these transients. And so that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be adding like a stage of compression to control the transients, but we're not going to use it at, at 100% either. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. We already have a tube mic going into a tube preamp. However, if you want to sort of beef up the vocals even more, using the soft distortion in the compressor is a great way to do this as well. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't. And sure, part of it is that it's just louder, but on another hand, it's also, you know, it's got more body to it and it really cuts through the mix easier than it was before. Now, I don't want to do 100% compression here, so I'm going to roll back the mix blend to let some of these natural transients through, uh, but not all of them. You know, the idea here is I want to tame them in a really musical way, and I also don't want to compress too much because what can happen is you start to lose clarity in the words. You know, you can't understand what the singer is saying. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't ever tell me why. Don't you ever tell me why. Cause I don't want, I don't want to know. Yeah, the Studio Fet and the Vintage Fet are both essentially like based off of 1176 models. So they're gonna have a very similar sound, but the Studio Fet seems to be a little bit more reserved, a little bit more controlled, whereas the Vintage Fet has a little more rawness to it, which I think I like in this vocal. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the Vintage Fet. And then last but not least, let's add a de on here. Because one of the issues here is as you start adding top end presence and air, the S's, the sibilants, are going to get really over accentuated. And so a way to deal with that is to add the de -er somewhere in the signal chain. You can add it before the compressor if you want, after the compressor, before the EQ if you want. It's completely up to you. And it's also up to, you know, what type of material you've gotten. If you already have a really S-y vocal straight off of the mic, you may end up adding the de -er sooner in your, in your signal chain. So I'm going to go ahead and just... Uh, grab this male vocal split band preset. So the way this works is the threshold sets the detection level where the sibilant peaks will be compressed, but it uses the sibilant's frequency range as a sidechain filter to detect sibilant content and then applies compression only to that same frequency range at least when you're in split band mode, this only compresses the sibilant range. And the sibilant range is also determined by whether your side chain filter is a band or a shelf, which can be selected here. Now you can use the wide band mode if you want the entire frequency range to be compressed, but I prefer to use the split band mode so we're only affecting the sibilant range. What you can do, what I recommend doing, is soloing the track, 
turn on the filter solo, and that's just going to reveal the frequencies that are the sidechain source for the compression. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. And listen in for where the S sounds are. What frequency range are they the most present? Now that you're sober. Now that you're sober. Now that you're sober. Don't now that you're sober. You don't want to go too high because then we start to cut into the air. And you don't want to go too low because then we start to cut into the meat of the vocal. So it's usually going to be between like 6,000 and 8, 9,000 hertz for most vocalists. It's going to be the sweet spot. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Let's unsolo the filter. Now that you're sober. So you can see here there's a lot of uh, de-essing happening. And this is also, again, where the threshold comes into play, because if you have your threshold really high like this, now that you're sober, none of the peaks are going to pass it. Now that you're sober, now that you're sober, now that you're sober. So each of those spots there where you see this uh, reduction meter coming down, that's showing where those SE areas are being compressed. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around it. And then max reduction is the amount of reduction, the maximum amount of reduction that can take place. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it. So if you've got a really low threshold like this. Now that you're sober. You may want to pull up the max reduction so you don't get an extreme amount of DSing going on. You can kind of think of the reduction like the compression ratio, but for a DSer. Now that you're sober, don't tell me. Th I think that's a little too aggressive. We're getting, you know, we're getting into the meat of the vocal. We really just want to take care of the sibilants. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't. And the upside to this is if you need to, add, if you find yourself needing to add more presence, you can add more presence, but then just take care of the sibilance here with the de-esser. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't ever tell me why. Don't you ever tell me why. Cause I don't want, I don't want to know. So let's hear what this sounds like over here in the bridge breakdown section because we're going to have to add some uh, EQ and compression on the screamed vocals as well. In fact, let's go ahead and just start moving these over. Let's move over the EQ and compression at least. Let's just check out the screams isolated. I'll go ahead and bypass the compressor for now. Through blinded eyes, can you finally say the hell you put me through? Yeah, we can probably get away with a little bit more top end boost here. Through blinded eyes, can you finally say the hell you put me through blinded eyes, can you finally say? There's a little bit of like a gnarly resonance in here that I actually kind of like, but let's see what that sounds like with the compressor in. Maybe the compressor can control that resonance a little bit. Through blinded eyes, can you finally say the hell you put me through? I'm going to open up the attack time a little bit more and dial back the parallel compression just to let a little bit more of the transients uh, to come through. Through blinded eyes, can you finally say the hell you put me through? Through blinded eyes, can you finally say the hell you put me through? Through blinded eyes, can you finally say? Yeah, I'm still a fan of the vintage FET here, uh, but, you know, there's no harm in playing around with different uh, different compression circuits and seeing which one sounds the best in the mix. Do I think I need a de -er here? I think I'm okay for, uh, for the, the screamed parts. Let's give this whole section uh, a listen here. Through blinded eyes, can you finally say the hell you put me through? 
Actually, you might need a little bit more compression. Through blinded eyes, can you finally see the hell you put me through? I can't reach your heart when you need me. We fight this undying war. I can't reach your heart when you need me. Bonus points if you caught it. There's a little uh, glitch in the vocal there on the word misery. I think it's just a bad edit on my part. We will make sure to fix that later. But yeah, it sounded good. The vocals are really coming together. In the next video, we're going to focus on the backing vocals, doing some cleanup and making sure that they line up with the lead vocals. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.